Hello to everyone. A big hug to you all in the Lord. And may God bless you all. Today, we are going to be talking about how God protects us and He is our strength. And I invite you to read the Bible. The Bible is full of history and doctrine which are going to help us to lead a life before God the way He wants us to lead it by doing His will, by submitting to Him. So in order to understand a little bit about the teaching I want to convey, I want us to go to our Bibles, to the book of Exodus, chapter 15. It is a song of Moses and Miriam towards God. And something that I think is fundamental, a great example that is left for all of us, is that we must be grateful with God. We must recognize Him, exalt Him, praise Him, extol Him for all of the wonders that He has performed from the beginning since He created a human being, since He created the entire universe. And now specifically with each and every one of us, that's why it's worth it to praise God. It's pr worth it to worship Him, to exalt Him, to honor Him. Because as we get to know Him, he becomes our everything. Moses, to remember why he was so grateful, we know by reading the story that God placed him as a savior of the people of Israel who had been slaves for 430 years with the Egyptians. And they all cried out to God, asking, where is the God of Israel? Knowing that that physical people, they were his special treasure and God sent them that Savior, Moses, in order to lead them to the land of Canaan. And Moses left with his people after God sent the plagues. After that last plague, let's remember, that's when he killed all the firstborn of all the Egyptians and also of all the animals. So they were sent away, but then God hardened the Pharaoh's heart and he wanted to destroy God's people. So they reach the Red Sea, and at that moment, Moses extends his rod, and they go through the dry land. And when the army of the Egyptians came, they wanted to try to do the same thing, to go through the divided sea. But then after the people of Israel exit the sea, then the sea goes back, closes once again, and destroyed that powerful army. Because if we are with God, then who can be against us? And that is why it states here in Exodus chapter 15, verse number 1, Then Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord and spoke, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for He has triumphed gloriously. The horse and its rider he has thrown into the sea, meaning he is narrating and exalting what God did, what God performed, his wonders. This is good, useful so that you and I may also be grateful with how thoughtful God is with each and every one of us. Something small, we say, oh, thanks to God, we were able to eat, we were able to sleep, we were able to clothe ourselves. Thanks to God, we have that sound mind to be able to understand that he is spirit, that he lives and it also states here in verse number two, the Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. Therefore, let us stop in this verse when he states, the Lord is my strength, meaning, we can understand this in two different ways. If we see strength as a, as a fortress, it's a, basically a place that was built, such as a castle, to be protected from enemies, then we also have an enemy, the devil, and that's why the Lord must be our strength, our fortress. But we can also see it from that point of view that He is our strength because He motivates us. God teaches us to be positive that 
it can be done with Him, with God. He gives us that strength because it states the Lord is my strength in song, meaning He's the one that strengthens me to sing to Him, to praise Him, to exalt Him. This is what happened with Moses. This should also happen with us. Thanks to God, He has called us. Thanks to God, we can know Him. And He has been he has become my salvation. It's because He saved them. He saved them from the hands of the Pharaoh. And He has also saved us from the world, from the claws of the enemy, the devil. And He wants to give us a great gift, a great reward, eternal life. It states in verse number 4, or the, the fourth part of verse 2, My Father's God, meaning He is a powerful God. He is a great God. He is a wonderful God. He is a merciful God. Each and every one of you must have in your mind and in your heart that the God is power, that God is great, that God is good. We must strive, brothers and sisters. We must strive so that the enemy doesn't place any thoughts in your mind, doesn't weaken you. But instead, you may become strong knowing that everything is possible with God. We can do it because He is our strength. And it also states, and I will praise Him. And that's what I'm doing. That's what we're all doing with our words. Praising Him, glorifying Him, exalting that great and powerful God. Blessed is our God. It also states, Moses also said, My Father is God, and I will exalt Him. At the end of verse 2, so how beautiful. I will exalt Him, meaning He is going to praise God. And when we exalt God, that's what it means. It's to praise Him, to to let him know his greatness, God's greatness. And, and why are we going to remain quiet and not say that we have a great and powerful God? How can we not exalt God when many of our friends and family ask us, but how's your life? What has happened with you during this pandemic? Why do you look so calm? Why do you look so strong? Oh, it's because the Lord is my strength. Oh, it's because I want to exalt God, that God. Almighty God who created everything that we see. That God who is great and wonderful. Blessed be our God. May the glory be to our Lord. And it also states in 2 Samuel. Let us go to 2 Samuel. Chapter 22. Another great story. Another great story of how God always wants to protect his people he always wants to protect his children and here we're talking about a story of king david in second samuel chapter 22 verse 1 it states then david spoke to the lord the words of this song on the day when the lord had delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of saul let us remember that David was a great warrior. He was a man who, who served his king, Saul. And Saul, when he saw how he had those privileges, how God used David, he became jealous and he wanted to kill him, but God protected him. Also, if we read the previous chapter, it talks about how Abishai, another great warrior who accompanied David, he protected him because they were fighting against the Philistines and these giants. And there was a giant that was going to kill David because David was tired in the middle of the war. And Abishai struck and killed this giant, this Philistine, because they appreciated and valued David and they knew that you must be loyal, loyal to God and loyal with our brothers and sisters, with our neighbor. That That is loving God above all things, to learn to be like this, to be loyal in every aspect, faithful with God, with our brothers and sisters, as that second commandment that God has given us. And that is why it states in verse number two, and he said, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. And remember, God is our rock. We must be founded on Him, upon that rock, His gospel, His doctrine. And it also straits in my fortress, meaning 
God is going to be our fortress. God will always give us victory. He teaches us to be positive, to continue onward. He inspires us because we know that with Him, all things are possible. And it also states in my deliverer. Yes, God has delivered us. As you give, devote yourself to God, as you become a doer of God's word, God will be our deliverer. God will protect us from the claws of the enemy so that you may have a sound mind and you may be able to truly value and love God. And that is why he states in verse 3, the God of my strength in whom I will trust and the only one that we can truly trust in is God. Because He is our strength. Because God is mine. He is belongs to each and every one of us. He's, he's ours. He, he is our strength. And He must be our driving force to wake up every day, to continue onward, to do our best to do good. When do I want to do good? When I trust in God. When I truly know that He lives. I know that He exists. I know that He is looking at me. I know that He's listening to me. I know that He's going to help me obtain victory. He says... He is my shield and the horn of my salvation. Remember, the Lord is our shield. He protects us from the darts of the enemy. He gives us victory in every aspect because He becomes our doctor. He becomes our lawyer, our advocate. He's our everything. Christ as that rock of power who will always be there to help us. It also, straight, it also states that God is our stronghold and refuge because we must find refuge in Him. We must share all of our problems with Him, our difficulties. Let us learn to speak with God more, to draw nearer to Him. Because many go to talk to other human beings, all of their problems, and perhaps all of your fears. Instead of saying, Lord, my God, You are my strength. Help me. I feel weak in this or in that aspect. I feel sad. I feel worried. But Lord, you are my Savior. And that is why it says here, you saved me from violence. And in verse 4 it states, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. He, He is the one we must call upon. Believe Him. Value God. Because God, when we call upon Him, God gives us victory. God blesses us. God prospers us. And we are going to be safe from our enemies because that is what God does. He saves us from all of our enemies. Lastly, in Psalm 27, let us go to Psalm 27, verse 1. That is why several believers have come to me telling me that they feel tormented, they feel destroyed, they feel weak. And here in Psalm 27, in verse number 1, it states, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Listen to this. Listen to this beautiful verse. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Meaning, who can help us? Who can give us victory? God. But a God who is spirit, a God who is truth, a God who lives, a God who is real. That is why it says that if we are with God, it says, Whom shall I fear? Who are we going to be afraid of? If God has all the power, because God is our strength, because He protects us, He blesses us. When we see that through His gospel, through His doctrine, by imitating Him, by wanting to be God's with lowercase g, by wanting to truly please God and love our neighbor and keep His commandments, His statutes, His judgments, then we're going to be light. And God will be our salvation. And whom shall we fear if God is going to always make us the head and not the tail? It states afterwards, the Lord is the strength of my life. Once again, he repeats in this verse, the psalmist David saying the same thing. The Lord is the strength of my life, meaning God protects us. God keeps us safe. But the Lord teaches us to be positive, to await in Him, to trust in Him, in His promises. That is why He speaks to us through dreams, through visions, through prophecy. And look at the 
beautiful prophecies that we have received through our sister Mary Luisa. They have been general prophecies, but I invite you to listen to them once again and listen to those teachings. Listen to the prophecy again. It's a general prophecy, but it's also individual for each and every one of us. Take it for yourself and it will be a comfort to your life and it will strengthen your soul because you cannot be sad. A heart that has God cannot feel sorrow. A God that knows God, a heart that knows God, that is why it states here, the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Of whom? If I have God, it states in verse 3 of Psalm 27, Though an army may encamp against me. Notice this, though an army, even if they want to go against us and do evil against us, it says, though they encamp against us, my heart shall not fear. The war may rise against me. In this, I will be confident. But why are we going to be confident? Because I have learned to believe God. I have learned to know God. I have inquired in His doctrine and His gospel. I know that God is my light. He is the way. He is my strength. He is that driving force in my life, as I said previously. And it also states, and that's why I am going to be confident. If God makes me promises, He will fulfill them. He will give me victory. And it also states in verse 4, One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Remember, that for the time of David in the Old Testament, everything was physical. And that's why God allowed for the tabernacle to be built. And afterwards, they built a temple in Jerusalem through Solomon so that they could all go and praise God there. But now, with that covenant that He made, the covenant of grace where Christ our Christ, our rock, our way, our light. Christ, Jesus Christ gave His life for you and for me so that you and I may give ourselves to Him. And by believing in Him, by following Him, we, each and every one of us, are going to be that temple, but that spiritual temple where God is going to dwell. Meaning that it states here, this that, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I mean, so as I fulfill with the, the gospel, the doctrine, as I become a doer of God's word, God is going to dwell in my heart. And He will be, God will be dwelling in this house, in this heart. God wants to dwell in all of our hearts. Let us allow Him to do so. Open your heart, the doors of your heart, wide open, valuing, trusting, believing Him, knowing that God is our strength. And God will protect us, and God will give us victory. And that is why the Bible states here that I may behold the beauty of the Lord, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. So, to behold the beauty of the Lord, yes, because as I get to know God, as I get to know that God lives, that God exists, as God uh, comforts us and fulfills His promises, as God gives us joy, peace, happiness, then we are going to feel and see and, and behold the beauty of the Lord, that God is good, that God is merciful, that He is our Savior, that He is our strength, and that if I am with God, then God will give me victory. And it states that I, to inquire in His temple, and that's what God wants, for us to inquire more of Him, to know more of Him, to go deeper into this path, into this gospel, for us to be faithful with God, for us to be constant with God, for us to always abide in His word and in His gospel. And God will make of us true sons and daughters of His. My brothers and sisters, may God bless you. May God keep you safe. And may God allow this pandemic to end soon. And may God bless our sister Mary Luisa greatly. And everyone, may God bless us all. And always give us victory in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.